Hi, and welcome to episode one of the Friday Phalaenopsis. Now, I have been growing Phalaenopsis almost my entire life. I know since I was 16, I have always had a Phalaenopsis. Generally, I've never had more than eh, maybe four at a time. And of course, they were all the grocery store or hardware store Phalaenopsis. I'm a little bit older now, and I have learned a few things. I do have about 83 Phalaenopsis, hybrids, species, novelties, summer bloomer, that category of orchids in my 183 orchid collection. So if you were doing the math, the majority of my collection is Phalaenopsis. Now I do have them all in different setups. This particular shelf is Leca. My Sogo Vivian here was recently repotted into bark and perlite, and I have some in all moss. I have some in moss and bark for varying reasons. So each Friday, until we circle back, I guess, to the original, the one we're gonna talk about today, I will go over how I care for mine. I'll let you know my growing environment. I'll tell you if I can find what the old books and the interwebs say about how to care for them. But today we are going to talk about lark song. Now, Lark Song is the flower on my channel page that I have chosen because I absolutely love, love, love this orchid. I love all my Phalaenopsis, and throughout the series, you're probably going to hear me say this is my favorite, but you know what? At the end of the day, aren't they all our favorites? In the meantime, I'm going to give you a moment. I want you to tell me how many Phalaenopsis, whether they're hybrid species, novelty fowls, whatever, you have in your collection and how many orchids in total do you have? Now, once you answer that question, I also want you to put in the comments, do you still like Phalaenopsis? Or do you consider them the common orchid as this poor, beautiful, lovely, lovely plant has been called? I will go move to the tripod, leave your comments below, be right back. So I have had this particular Lark Song since February of 2020. She was one of the first Phalaenopsis that I added to my collection when I first started recollecting. And I say recollecting because my husband's job required us to move a lot, so I didn't really build up a collection like I have now. And like I said at the beginning, usually no more than four. I think I had six at one time, but usually no more than four. I saw her blooms when I first walked in the grocery store because the grocery store I, I shop at, the flower section is right at the door. The bloom said, buy me, and I did. And I have not regretted it since. She is a reliable bloomer. She blooms for me around this time of the year as we can see she has this beautiful spike growing here and then she blooms for me again in the spring so she blooms for me twice a year i recently repotted her into this setup which is bark perlite let me just move this out of the way real quick here uh, it's just a bark and perlite mix before that i had her in a moss and bark mix because her roots were struggling they are no longer struggling, so now she's in this mixture here. I love these aerial roots. How many people enjoy aerial roots? Leave down below if you cut your aerial roots and why. But they have beautiful growing tips on them. She is a very big leaf orchid. I do not know her parentage. I have Googled it several times and nothing pops up. So if anyone knows, let me know so I can at least have that knowledge as well. Now, she's never had a double spiking for me. I would love that if she did. The way that I care for her is she gets watered about every five to eight days. As the media dries out, I let it completely dry before I water again. And sometimes I soak her, sometimes I just run water through her. It just depends on how much time I have. But she, when gets, um, sorry, when she gets fertilized, I fertilize her between 150 to 300 parts per million. Usually in the winter time, I do lower my fertilizer for all of my orchids, and the 150 is the max that I'm willing to do. 
but now that she is growing the spike, I am now watering her at the 300 parts per million so that she continues her root growth that she's doing in the pot as well as be able to support this beautiful spike coming. Now she sits on the top shelf of my um, orchid grow shelf that I use. She only gets the light from whatever's in the room. She doesn't get any supplemental lighting. She has never had supplemental lighting and has been loving life ever since. Her leaves have always been this beautiful apple color here. And I did wipe her down because sitting up there, she does get a lot of dust on her simply because it's closer to the ceiling fan. So dust. Now I have another Lark song here. Just move this one out of the way my daughter bought me back in August of 2021. She came with a double spike. You can see the dried spikes right here and then the other one is right here under the bottom. She grew this leaf, which is, you know, not quite as big, but it was nice. Then she grew this leaf, which was a little bit shorter. And then she grew this leaf. So at first I thought it was a light training issue, but if you look up underneath, do you see all the damage? I believe we had some bug issues because her leaf just curled over. And I didn't notice that at first until this leaf started growing. And as you can tell, she has some of the pottings in her as well. So what I did is I wiped all of the leaves with rubbing alcohol top and bottom and I did it during the day because the stomatas are closed during the day so there's no chance of damaging it and then it gave it time to the alcohol to evaporate and for her to dry out. These leaves right here I was wiping once a week for about two to three weeks and I've noticed that the bottom part of this newer leaf here I don't know if you can really see is seems to be growing a lot smoother without any of the markings in there and the back of the leaf is not as bad as it was right in this area right here. I am continuing to wipe her leaves down once a week with the rubbing alcohol to help prevent any infestation of anything. None of the orchids around her had any other signs of whatever was going on here. Now the leaf is stiff as is this one and she is still a little tender on the edge down here so i know it's still growing a little bit but i believe it's pretty much reached its life cycle so i'm going to watch the next leaf and see if it comes out clean if not i may have to isolate her and just really give her a good systemic treatment because then i feel like it's something on the inside of the pot now she's been in this pot since August of 2021. The blooms did not last that long. Um, they were all already open when I received her, still gorgeous. And I repotted her about two weeks after I received her and she's been in this pot since then. So if the next leaf that comes out doesn't grow nice and pretty, I may just take her out of this media, clean her up really well in the spring and then pot her up into a new setup. She has been in this particular setup since March, I think it was March of 2022. Yeah, beginning of spring 2022. And she, all these roots that you see here on the outside are the roots that she's grown this season because when I put her in, I did not see any roots on the outside. Like I like to keep the roots out. She has lots of air pockets um, because I do water, when I soak her, I do soak her for about an hour to make sure everything gets nice and wet, but then I won't water her again for a good 10 days because it'll take it about that long to dry out being under the fan. So this one here sits in the corner over here. I'll post a picture of her sitting in her spot. So she gets dappled lighting. She doesn't get any like strong light. She gets the bright light, bright shade that they say that Phalaenopsis need. Now with hybrid Phalaenopsis, they are bred for vigor meaning they can pretty much withstand any punishment we give them. They're great orchids to start with to get that learning curve. If you overwater them, they will drop their roots. If you forget to water them for a week or two, they'll be okay. The leaves will start showing some signs of dehydration by wrinkling, 
but they bounce back fairly quickly. Once they do have these signs of dehydration, let me see if I can, no, not on these. I thought one of these had an example, but if they do show signs of dehydration, once they rehydrate, those wrinkles are always gonna be there. They won't go away, but the leaves themselves will perk back up. Again, let me know what you think about Phalaenopsis. If there is a particular Phalaenopsis in my collection you are aware of that you want me to talk about next week, leave that down below as well. And I am so interested to see how many of you still love these beautiful, beautiful plants now that you've found other orchids to collect.